Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. This is going to be part one of the Perusa i3 MK3 printer build. I'm going to do a video on each section of the build. So the first section is, is step two. Step two is just going over the tools and um, making sure you have everything you need. But uh, step two is the first build. So let's get started after the intro. So for most of the time I'm going to do a time lapse of the build. I'm having the online manual uh, on the screen here and uh, it came with a very good printed manual. Uh, but there might be some comments or updates on the online manual. Uh, that is useful, so I'm going to stick to the online manual. So uh, to get started, I'm going to get the extrusions and and the country and some screws. And the step two items. And I probably have to move my cat away a few times during the build. But let's see if we can. Uh, have this view uh, active. So I think I will use this camera for most of the time, but I will move the camera and talk about uh, some certain things if I find something that is interesting or, or difficult to do or, or something that I feel like talking about specifically. But uh, uh, let's get started with the build. One thing to note, uh, you shouldn't tighten those screws at this time, just put them in and al align everything before you tighten the screws. And also make note the the Prusa logo is on the same side as the longer extrusions. So here is the Prusa logo and here are the longer extrusions and the short ones go in the back. So now when they when you have put all the screws in, uh, you have to lay it down on a, on a flat surface and, and tighten the screws and they tell you to tighten them in a diagonal way, so uh, to each corner opposite to each other. So now this first step is uh, done, this is step three in the manual. Uh, step four is uh, take the shorter extrusions and put them on the opposite side. So now, as before, you have to tighten the screws in each corner to the offset one. So now step four is done. Step five is final check. So they just make sure that you have the longer extrusions on the Prusa logo side. side. And the shorter ones here, um, and the longer ones are uh, closer together than the, the short ones. So uh, this uh, is, is correct. So they're just making sure that you get everything right. So step six is to get the rear plate, uh, the front plate in place. So there's no orientation on those, they are uh, the same 
this way or, or this way. Uh, but the shorter one goes in the front and the longer one in the back. Um, um, they make sure you oriented it correctly. So it goes goes like this. And they say in the instructions uh, do not tighten the screws, just put them loosely in first. So now when all the screws are in, you're going to tighten the screws um, the same as before in a diagonal uh, pattern on, on each side. And now do the same on the other side. Yeah, and one thing to note here, uh, before you put on the end cap, you have to put in the slot on the for the power supply and they are placed in like so. There are two of them that will hold the power supply at a later stage. So those you can't forget. But now we can move in to step nine and place this piece here. And now when the screws are in, you're going to tighten them in the same way, in a horizontal or diagonal method as before. So now they want me to check if the, if the geometry is, is correct. Uh, I have to move to another table. I know this table is, is not any good, so uh, let me just check on the kitchen counter that is uh, straightened and I will make sure everything is correct. So that took a few minutes. Uh, I had to loosen up first this end and get this square to the frame and then loosen up this end and get this, this, uh, this end squared to the rest. So it was a two-step process. Begin with this one and then with this one. And this table here is very, very uneven. So here it is a little bit wobbly, but on the kitchen counter that is completely flat, is it was no uh, issues on it. So I think I will have a successful uh, balance. Now uh, the guide tells me to install the rubber feet, those. And I saw on Tom's uh, assembly uh, live stream, those were falling off all the time. So I'm gonna do that at a later time and probably glue them in place when they are, when I'm done. So they were dropping out of the frame constantly when you were turning around the printer. So I'm not gonna annoy myself with that. So those are gonna wait uh, to a later time. But it's not an issue, I think, for a build, unless I notice uh, something has to go underneath that requires the feet to be in place. I will put them in place and probably then glue them. But uh, I think I'll uh, uh, skip, skip it for now. So the next step is to uh, place the plastic parts uh, at the, for the smooth rods. And uh, I'm gonna uh, gather those together and have the screws holding them. So the first thing you have to do is place the square nuts into the plastic parts. So gonna push push those in. So step 13 was just to make sure the nuts are completely in. And if they're not able to go all the way in, uh, there might be some plastic uh, uh, in the way, but I didn't have any problem with that step, so I'm good for step 14. 
and that is to place the the, the holders on the on the back and front, and there are 20 like 10 millimeter screws uh, to hold them. They seem to fit quite nicely, so there's no issue on this end. And I don't think it's necessary to over tighten those. We'll just damage the plastic. Now I have to hold the the square nut in place. It was uh, a little bit loose on one of the one of the plastics. I think I have to just push it a little bit. Yeah, I just had to push the square nut a little bit up to get it to grip. And if I drop something, I have to make sure my cat doesn't uh, get the part. That's my main concern. If he jumps, jumps to the floor and pushes the part under the sofa or something. That one fitted quite nicely. And then note uh, that you shouldn't tighten, tighten those screws fully, just uh, have them a little bit loose. So I'm going to loosen them up a little bit. So step 15 is to prepare the Y-belt idler. And that is, is this part here. And, uh, the idler uh, bearing and some screws. So you have to push in uh, those nuts. They are, they are nylon uh, nuts. So it's best to use a, some screwdriver to push, push them in. And one goes on this side. And now uh, put in the idler and the 18 millimeter screw. And I say don't over tighten. So make sure the, the bearing can rotate. So the next step is is mounting the idler to the frame. So this goes on the on the short on the longer extrusion sorry. Um, it goes uh, like so. Uh, with two two ten millimeter screws. And they say that uh, don't tighten those screws. You will use the, the screws to tighten the belt. So I'm gonna back out a little bit. So you have some play to tighten the belt. So I'm leaving like a two or three millimeter uh, gap. To, so this can move a little bit. The next step is to get the Y-axis motor, and I'm going to get that from the box. You can see on the motor there is Y-axis written on the on the motor, so make sure you have the correct one. So step 20 is to mount mount the motor to the holder. That is this piece, and you have to put in uh, uh, nuts, and those don't have the nylon. Inserts, they are just normal nuts. The next step is to mount this uh, like so, and using two 10 millimeter screws to secure it to the motor. So the next step is to mount this bracket to the short end 
and the motor should uh, face like this. And the T nuts are here, and the axle of the motor is fa is facing the T nuts. So that is a correct uh, orientation. And then you use two screws, ten millimeter screws, to fix it in place. I have to push in the the nut. It doesn't uh, grip on the nut right away. Now it did. <coughs> I just had to push the nut a little bit into the plastic. So those are you, you're going to tighten to the end. And this is step 21. Uh, now step 22 is to prepare the Y carriage. So I'm going to get that. So now uh, the note that the carriage is symmetrical so uh, it doesn't matter uh, which way it turns uh, this way or, or this way on the MK2 printer uh, uh, it was not symmetrical so uh, it is actually a dot here in the corner but uh, on the website they say uh, this doesn't matter anymore so so it's the same on this on this side. So I just uh, give you a heads up warning if you have been assembling the MK2 printers. You have to make make sure the dot was in the right place when you place the bearings. So now we can uh, just carry on with the placement of the bearings. Uh, and the first one is this uh, over here, and the tell you to make sure the, the bearing uh, bolts in the bearings are uh, oriented in a specific way so you have to uh, make sure that is done correctly and um, it will uh, be uh, it's worse for the for the smooth rods if the if the bearings don't line up correctly so in step 23 they show you how to prepare the first bearing and then you uh, insert the the fasteners the u-bolt they tell you that you uh, have to make sure don't rotate the bearing and and do not over tight tighten the, the nylon nuts because you will crush the bearing so you have to be careful uh, in this step and, and make sure you do everything right. So I have this great tool to do this. And they say it just uh, when you see the, the nut is touching you just feel it uh, gripping on, uh, yeah, and make sure the, the bolts in the ins inside are um, oriented in the correct way. I have to rotate it a little bit, I see. So I think this is, uh, this is okay. And then you have to do the same for the other two bearings. And Make sure you rotate uh, the bearings in the correct way there also. I'm having a little bit of trouble. The U shape is a little bit open, so I have to uh, fix that real quick. I'll just clump it together a little bit it's not going in very smoothly so that was just a minor minor issue and I can continue yeah my main uh, camera battery died so I have to talk through a headset mic that I have plugged into a USB port so I have to have this cable on me now and the, the normal mic is connected to the camera so 
that's uh, not connected directly to the computer so uh, don't mind the cable so now uh, I've inserted the rods and it seems to be quite smooth I had to uh, loosen a little bit of the screws uh, on this side and I tighten it a little bit on this side and I think it's in a good shape now and the next step is to mount the carriage to the to the main body you have to make sure the two bearings are on the left side so this is this is the left side uh, the Prusa logo on the left side so now you have to push push in the, the corners so that's done uh, now you take uh, the zip ties and I tell you to Push them in like so, and do that for all four corners. So now they tell you to release all of the all the screws on the on the end that holds the uh, rods and so the rods can be aligned uh, probably uh, at loosen them up a little bit before uh, have to make sure the the, the, the car is 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 moving smoothly and now it tells you to move the carriage to the front and tighten the screws over there and just tighten them very lightly at first I don't find any resistance so those, those are tight and then move it to the back and, and tighten at the back and this is completely free there is no resistance I'm gonna just tighten all the screws a little bit more that's that's step 30 30 and the next step 31 is align the pulley and there, are two, there are two set screws on the pulley uh, but only one uh, straight face on the pulley uh, but they say rotate that upward and uh, have the pulley uh, uh, rotate it like this with one set screw facing up and one set screw facing towards the middle of the printer so like this and, and they don't they say don't press uh, press it against the motor uh, it must just be somewhere uh, somewhere in the middle so I'll tighten the set screw that is the upward facing set screw uh, the pulley uh, is somewhere in the, in the middle I probably have to adjust this later when the belt comes on um, I'll just uh, uh, I'll not tighten this fully it says uh, don't tighten fully uh, we will do that later uh, but now we will assign insert the belt 
so the first step is to put end <coughs> to put the end in in in, the, in this holder you have to make sure it's in a upper slot and the, the belt is facing with the teeth down and uh, align it with the teeth in the in the plastic part and you can use the screwdriver to push it push it a bit in uh, now uh, feed the belt through the, the pulley here and over the the plastic part and over the country and underneath uh, the motor and back uh, underneath yeah they say just tighten it a little bit and push it down with your hand uh, because the when we tighten up those bolts that will will tighten the belt and uh, we might have to adjust this a little bit uh, the alignment step is next so you don't fully tighten the belt so to align the belt uh, yeah there are two points that you have to align the the belt uh, in the in the plastic part here and then move the pulley to the correct place so those are the two places that you have to align uh, so I'm gonna I see that I have to I have to move the pulley a little bit. And if I align align the belt at the top uh, with the tensioner, uh, because the tensioner over here, this part uh, can't move to each side. So this is a fixed position. So if I move this uh, up and try to align uh, the belt in the in the grooves, so it's correctly mounted here. So I think this is uh, pretty good. Um, now when I move it down uh, towards the motor, uh, I have to move the the pulley accordingly so it is aligned so I have to move it a little bit inwards I think I think it's a it's in a, a pretty good good place I don't think I can move it any further so I'm going to tighten up the, the pulley So now I think everything is is pretty smooth and pretty much aligned. Uh, and uh, now when when the alignment is is done, uh, I think I'm uh, quite happy with the alignment. Uh, you have to tighten up uh, those screws at the end. I think I might uh, have it a little bit over tightened, but uh, it's. I'm not sure. The movement is smooth, so I think it's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna gonna loosen it one tooth. I, th I think it's 
I think it's uh, a little bit over tightened. Don't want to wear, wear down the belt. Yeah, I moved it uh, one tooth uh, more loose. It, it was uh, like a very, uh, very stiff. So I think everything is, is moving uh, smoothly and there is no uh, resistance in either end. So I think this is uh, okay. Yeah, and they say in the instruction, don't over tighten the belt. So they uh, tell you to test the, the X belt, uh, use pliers to hold the X as it's moving motor shaft. Yeah, if you hold down this and try to move the X carriage, if it, if it uh, skips, it's too loose and it's just perfect, I think. And I think my cats approve. <laughs> so this is okay. So now the x-axis is, is finished, so this uh, step 2 of the build is, is done. So uh, my main camera battery is, uh, is uh, dead and I have to recharge, but uh, this uh, uh, was far less uh, 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 annoying <laughs> to build as the MK2 with the threaded rods and I think uh, this is much sturdier frame and better in every way so uh, for for this video this will uh, be it and I'll see you in the step 3 where we continue the build